my name is Azure and welcome to my channel. This is very different from the usual kind of content I put out. Um, usually I make videos that are related to Voco and Project Sakai and I actually have a lot of Vocaloid merchandise which you'll see in the video but this is a video on my manga collection. I've been reading manga since I think 2019 was when I started and I've been collecting since summer of 2021. So it's been almost two years, which is really crazy to think about for me. But I really love manga, and I have collected it, and now I want to show it to y'all. So please enjoy. Um, I apologize for any like shaky footage or bad quality audio or video. I don't have like a fancy camera or a good microphone. This is just my phone recording right now. But I hope you'll enjoy it anyways. And at the end, I will talk about some manga that I do not own, but I do still enjoy. So stick around at the end for that. So my collection actually doesn't start on the main shelf you're gonna see in the intro. It's actually over here where I keep all of my normal books as well as the one series you see right here. This is the Fruits Basket Collector's Editions. Um, volumes one through 12, I put them here because in the big bookshelf over there, it's really hard to fit this into one single shelf. And it just takes up a lot of space, so I put it over here, and I think it works really well here. It's the same size as a lot of my normal books. And I don't know, I have the height here where I can stack it pretty well, and I just think it looks good here. So this is the very top shelf of my big white bookcase. I apologize for the really shaky footage. Uh, my family's tripod doesn't go up this tall, and I have to stand on a stool to get up here. But this is the top shelf. This is where it's mainly figures on this shelf, just because I think they look good up here. These are my two favorite Miku figures. We have the Happy Birthday 2021 one over here, and this is the Sega Ghost Roll one from Project Diva. And then we have, what is this thing called? <laughs> A Nendroid Petite, I think it's called. And then in the back, we have Hatsune Mix which is just a manga about Hatsune Miku. It was made by the person who did the original Miku box art, which is really cool. And then underneath that, we have Plate Cool Guys 1 through 4. Recently got an anime this season. And that's all for this top shelf. On the second shelf here, we have Yona of the Dawn, which is my all-time favorite series. Um, this is the longest series I own. It currently has 38 volumes in English. I'm actually completely caught up with the Japanese releases when they come out every month just because I love this series so much. This was, I think, like the first very long series I ever read back when I was first getting into manga and it kind of blew me away with how good it was. And I own all of it now. It took me about a year to get all the volumes mainly because the earlier volumes took a really long time to get back in stock. But I do own it all now. Um, and it's Women's History Month when I'm filming this, so we have Yona and Lily in the front. This series really has something for everybody. It has action, it has comedy, it has adventure and action and political fantasy and really anything you can think of it probably has. And it's just really, it has a lot of heart in it. And that's why I love this series so much. So here's the third shelf. This is kind of where I keep my more oversized volumes just because I feel like it's kind of hard to push them in with the other smaller standard size volumes. So here we have The God's Lie, which is a one-shot story. It's only about five chapters long. I've heard a lot of people talk about it, so I picked it up and I was very confused, just to say the least. Um, I'm gonna reread it at some point just to like make sure I wanna keep it, but it was pretty good. The art style was nice. And then we have Vodakoi underneath it, which is a really good comedy series. Um, if you're looking for a series that's romance and has more like adult characters who are, you know, adults and they work and stuff, this is a good series. And it has a lot of like Japanese pop culture references in it, which um, if I, they'd probably be, probably be funnier if I knew most of what they were talking about, but it's still really good regardless. Um, if you have a favorite Wodokoi couple, please tell me in the comments. Um, I would love to talk about all three of them with you. And then behind these little Sailor Moon figures, we have A Sign of Affection, Volumes 1 through 5. Um, this is a really good ongoing series about a girl that is deaf and a guy that really likes to learn languages, and she agrees to teach him sign language, and they kind of fall in love. It's really fluffy and cute, 
And honestly, if you want something that, that'll just give you warm feelings inside, this is a series I'd recommend. And then next to it, we have a series that is newly publishing in the Clear Moonlit Dusk. It's really good. So far, it's high school, and there are these two students. So one of them is a girl, and the other is a boy. And they're both referred to as, like, the prince, because they both have very princely qualities, and they're both really handsome and stuff. And the girl has kind of felt insecure about it for all her life. But the guy comes in, and, she, and he's like, oh, you're really cute. And she'd never really been called that, so it's very interesting for her. But they kind of go, they grow closer, and it, they start dating eventually. I am... I think I've read up to volume four online. I'm not really sure, but I do read manga online as well. And then next to it, we have Orange. And Orange is a pretty well-known shoujo series. Um, it has an anime. It recently got the final volume in English, which I'm so happy about, because it took me forever. Just, I just wanted to finish it so badly. And now it's done and I'm amazed. Um, it, so it deals with this girl and her group of friends who receive a letter from themselves in the future telling them that there will be this boy that joins their class and they're going to have to save him from a very sad fate. And they kind of, the series really just follows them as they do that, at least these two chunky ones right here. And then these are both like alternate timeline series. Um, it's a really good series. I've seen people say that they don't like it because of various reasons, but I personally really like it. It's good. So I recommend, although I really recommend anything that I have. So, yeah. So now we get on to the bottom three cells, which are all double stacked pretty heavily. And because of that, I'm going to go over the series in the front first, and then I'll take them off, and then I'll show you the ones in the back. So the first one on this shelf is a series with a very unfortunate English name called Cheeky Brett which really makes me crack up every time I say it out loud, but it's pretty good. Um, it's a boy, so it's a boy on the basketball team, and then the manager of the basketball team kind of, they bicker a lot, but they like each other too. It's, it's entertaining. I've seen a lot of people say they don't like it, but I think it's really entertaining personally. It's kind of a train wreck, and I like things that are train wrecks. And then next to it we have Emakoi, which is another pretty new series that's coming out in English. Um, one through five, and this one is about a girl who, throughout her middle school years, she has a crush, and she never tells the guy, and then he eventually just becomes unavailable, so she decides that whoever she ends up falling in love with next, she's gonna tell them, she's gonna work up the courage to tell them, and the next guy she meets that she falls in love with is a guy that saves her on the train from a creep, and he, she, you know, she tells him, and she's like, okay, let's date. And they end up dating, and it's really fluffy, it's really cute, they have a really cute relationship, and it's just a really good series. It's not anything special, but it will warm your heart. And the next year we have Rainbow Days, which is just a shoujo about um, four high school boys and their adventures in love. It's, it's quite entertaining as well. Um, the first time I read the first volume, I didn't really like it, but when I got the second volume and I reread the first one to read the second, I ended up liking it a lot more. So if you're in the, like, the situation where you don't like the first one at first, maybe wait a while and then reread it. And then next to it, we have one volume of Library Wars. Um, Library Wars is a series I really like, and it's really sad because I feel like nobody ever talks about it, but it's this really good shoujo series. It has a lot of like sci-fi elements in it. It's not just sci-fi, but it has a lot of sci-fi. It has action, it has romance in it. It's really good. Um, this The premise is kind of complicated, but they fight against censorship is like the main thing of the series is what they're trying to do. It's really good. And the next to it, I have a Miku figure because I love Miku. I would absolutely love to have a Kaido figure one day because he's my favorite Vocaloid, but they're all kind of really insanely priced. So if they ever made one that was like in my budget and I would like be reasonably able to buy it, I would absolutely get it. But sadly, that's not the case right now. So maybe one day. So now you can see the back of the third shelf and a quick note about my risers. The plastic things you see on the bottom are all from Amazon. And I think you can get them in like a set of 12 and then they are just resting on a piece of cardboard I cut from a box. I've seen a lot of people with like very fancy 
risers, but these just work for me. They're really easy to swap out if I need to take them out. And they just work really well. So on the left, we have Tsubaki Cho Lonely Planet, which is a new series that's being published in English. When I got the first volume, I accidentally read the like the last 11 volumes on accident. Like I binged the entire series, so it's good. <laughs> um, it's this girl whose father moves out just in order to make their financial situation better. And she moves in with this, housekeep this author and she becomes his housekeeper. It's good. It's nothing special. But then again, most of the stuff I read isn't very, that special. I just enjoy it. So I do recommend it if it's something you'd be interested in. And then we have A Condition Called Love, Volume 1, next to it. Um, so A Condition Called Love is about this girl who believes she just can't fall in love. Um, but then one day she helps this guy out by lending him an umbrella in the snow. And then the guy shows up the next day and says that he likes her and if she would consider dating him. So they start kind of fake dating for a while and then she grows feelings and it, it goes from there. I think I've read up to like volume 11 of this. It's really good. The art is really nice. Um, the guy is a little bit clingy and weird at first just because he's that's how he thinks that girls want him to act but he does eventually grow into himself and kind of becomes less clingy. Then we have Lovesick Ellie, which I think that Lovesick Ellie like all the descriptions you can find of it make it sound really weird, which is really a disservice because it's really funny. Um, like she's not nearly as creepy as the description would make it out to be the main girl, but it's essentially this girl who has a secret Twitter account where she tweets like little boyfriend scenarios like my boyfriend did this or my boyfriend did that. And so this guy in her class finds out about it and she kind of makes fun of her for it, but they end up like liking each other. So it, it all turns out well in the end. I have actually completed this series online because it was all available online and I do really like it. I think it's funny. It's very entertaining to me, but who's surprised? I like really weird premises. And then we have Sailor Moon 1 through 12. Um, everybody knows Sailor Moon. It's really good. I think it would be better if it didn't have Chibiusa in it because I do not like Chibiusa at all. But overall, it's a good series. Um, I really want the new Naoko Takeuchi editions they're putting out, but they seem to be coming out kind of slow, so I think I'm just going to hold on to the plain old editions I have now. And maybe one day I will get the nice editions. So this is the second to last shelf. It has a bunch of fantasy series. I like to try to keep things um, organized by genre, so like if you'll notice all of the the, the series on the shelf above this were all like contemporary high schoolish romances except for Sailor Moon but that doesn't count. And then here I have all my fantasy series because I love fantasy and I think that fantasy series are great. So we have Apothecary Diaries right here which is adapted from a light novel. It's really good. If you like Yona of the Dawn you'll probably like the series. They have very similar vibes but it is getting an anime soon so it is about this Apoth I don't know what it's called, but like a person who works in apothecary joins the inner court of the emperor to try to, I guess, become like a better doctor. And she ends up solving a lot of mysteries along the way. And there's a lot of intrigue in it. There's a lot of like court politics and it's just really entertaining. And then next to it, we have My Happy Marriage, which is stylized to be kind of like a Cinderella story. I don't know if it's that close to a Cinderella story, but it is interesting. It's about this girl who's been mistreated by her family, who ends up marrying this guy who treats her nicely. And she kind of just escapes the bad home life she has. And then next to it, we have two stack series. I like to stack series, if you can't tell. I just think it saves a lot of space. But we have Prince Freya on the top, which is a very good fantasy action series. It's about this girl who looks a lot like this prince that dies of the country, so she ends up taking his place and pretending to be him in order to keep the morale of the citizens up as their country is being invaded. Um, I've actually dropped this series before just because like it was taking them forever to print another volume and then now I've picked it up again and now I have to wait like six months until the next volume comes out, which I'm very mad about because <laughs> it's like whenever I start reading something, the releases just get delayed and it's really annoying. But the series is very good. The art is nice. Um, my only complaint is that I feel like the volumes don't have like enough content in them. Like your normal um, Viz volume has like four 
chapters in it. And this one only has three and they're really skinny as you can probably tell, but it's okay, I'll deal with it. And then under it, we have another Viz series, The King's Beast, that also doesn't have a ton of content. This one is about this girl that becomes like this beast servant thing to avenge her brother who has seemingly been killed. Um, I can't reveal any spoilers, but it's very good. It has a lot of like, once again, palace intrigue. <laughs> um, if you like Apothecary Dies, if you like Yona, you'll probably like this too. Um, is good. The art is really nice. It's by Ray Toma, who's done a couple other series, and this is the same universe as Dawn of the Arcana. And I've never been able to read Dawn of the Arcana just because I can't get past like the first volume. It just annoys me. But I do like this series. It's good. The Water Dragon's Bride is also good, but it's not as good as this one. This one's the best. And yeah. So now this is the back of the second to last shelf, and the first series we have is Golden Japanesque. And Japan... Golden Japanesque is the series that takes place in, I think, 1920s, 1910s Japan. So right when Japan began to be opened up to, like, American trade and Western trade again. And it's about this girl who has a father that is from a foreign country, so she has blonde hair and blue eyes, which makes her pretty ostracized by the community. But she meets this young um, heir to a, a well, well-bred family, and they kind of hit it off. And it's a romance. Um, I like the clothes they wear. I think it's very nice. I'm just really sad that there hasn't been like any announcement about a volume six. Like what happened? <laughs> but it's good. Um, if you don't want to like stop at volume five and like just wait forever till the next volume gets announced or like new trackers get released or whatever, I don't blame you. Like it annoys me too, but Hopefully one day we'll get a volume six. And then we have Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts. This is really similar to Beauty and the Beast. So if you like that fairy tale, you'll probably like this. It's this girl that is sent as a sacrifice to the King of Beasts, obviously. And then he doesn't hurt her at all. She ends up like becoming like a person that's really close to him. And it's kind of like her journey to become the queen of this land and there's two more volumes for me to go. I need two more volumes and I'll have the, the entire thing. Um, I'm excited. Um, the Beast also has his secret, which I'm not going to say just because I don't want to spoil it, but it is really good and I really do recommend it. Then we have Requiem of the Rose King, which I think is based off like an early draft of, bleh, draft of Richard III by Shakespeare. I read like a chunk of it online like sometime last year, early last year. And I don't remember a ton, so I'm just gonna like reread it and see if I still like it. So yeah, and then we have the Dragon Knight's Beloved, which is about dragons and knights and this girl who likes dragons. And it's not that special, but it has a cute guy in it. So I read it anyways. <laughs> it is entertaining. I just haven't gotten the fourth volume yet just because I've been collecting other things, but I will eventually get it. And then we have Seventh time loop, the villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy, which it's just another one of those like villainous series. I have a really soft spot for them, like especially in manhwa. I think the manhwa, the manhwa ones are really better than the manga ones, but it's okay. <laughs> I still really enjoy them. So now we are at the very bottom shelf. Um, if I sound weird, I'm sorry. I have to lay on my stomach to get this. So this is where I keep all of my shonen stuff. I don't really read a ton of shonen, just because it's just not a demographic that really appeals to me. But there are some series I do enjoy, and the series in the front are the ones I really like. And then we have just some more in the back. So we have Welcome to the Ballroom Volume 1. I read this and I liked it, and I really need to read the rest of it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I will one day. It should be a priority as soon as I finish a couple of other things. But it is about ballroom dancing. Um, it's a sports manga. I really don't like sports in real life. So I usually don't read sports manga. But I can. I like it if it's a sport that's like really unconventional. So for example, I really like Skate the Infinity. Which is like about skateboarding. And I think that series is great. So if it's about a, if it's about a sport that's like not like really common like baseball or football, I'll probably enjoy it. Then we have Blue Box. Which is a romance about... So it's a guy that plays, I think, um, what's it called? Badminton? And I think the girl plays basketball. There's another, like, gymnast girl. And 
they all I think two of them live together it's it's a high school romance it's good um I think shoujo romances are generally better but I like this one too so we have Spy X Family everybody knows Spy Family like it just had it just had an anime it's really big here right now so I'm not really going to talk about it it is good um I like Yor the best I think she's the best character um Anya's good too but I think that Miri from Buddy Daddies is better, which is gonna be really controversial. But I stand by my opinion that Spy F that Buddy Daddies is more entertaining. It Spy Family is good. Don't get me wrong. It's really funny, but I just think that the chaotic atmosphere of Buddy Daddies is better. <laughs> I just more I just enjoy it more. Then we have Kaiju number eight. Um Kaiju are essentially like these big monsters, kinda like Godzilla. So the jo so it's this guy that's in his 30s, and he wants to become a kaiju, like, hunter, but he's never been able to pass the test, so he- that's his goal. So it kind of just follows him as he does that. There are a couple other characters that I really like in it, too. It's a really good action series, and it has nice art. So here is the back. First we have the quintessential quintuplets, which is another romance. Um... Shoujo Ramses are better, but this one's not bad. I just have, like, a really hard time telling all the quints apart. But otherwise, I think it's funny. It's not, like, the best romance I've ever read, but it's it's funny. And then we have Free Run Beyond Journey's End, which is getting an anime, I want to say, next season. Or, like, the season after that. Um, It's about this elf who once went on a journey to defeat the Demon King. And all of her companions from that have died, so she kind of wanders around for a while, and she eventually finds something to do with her life. And we have Black Clover next to it. Black Clover is good. It's really popular, so I'm not going to say a ton about it, but I'm taking a break from reading it right now because I think it's in its last arc. Hopefully that's true. <laughs> but these are just the volumes I have. They're not in order. I don't have all of them because I feel like that'd be a lot. But they're good. I do recommend it. And... Then we have Oshinoko, which is actually, I know is getting an anime next season. Um, it was sure is, it sure was something. That Those are my reactions. Like, I put, I closed it and I was like, that, that sure was something. It was, it was interesting. Um, I will get the second volume and then I'll just see if I want to keep continuing from there. Like, it was interesting, but I feel like if it's only going to be about, like, this kid acting and not, like, him trying to figure out what happened to his mom... I'm just gonna get bored, so, yeah. And then this is the bottom of my cart that usually sits right next to my shelf. It usually is for plushies, but I've just repurposed this bottom tier of it just to hold some manga that are pretty big. The first series we have here is Arakawa Under the Bridge, which is a very, um, absurd series. Um, if you like really, like, surreal, absurd comedy, you'll probably like it. Like, the premise is even crazy. It's this guy who believes he should never owe any kind of debt to anybody. So he ends up moving under this bridge because this girl saved him. And next to it we have Go by the Clouds North by Northwest. Which is in a similar boat to Golden Japanese. Because there's, no, there's been no announcement regarding a volume 6. Which is really annoying, but it is an interesting series. It's set in Iceland. And the the main character is... Essentially like a private detective who can talk to cars and machinery. It's a very weird premise, but it's really good and the art is really nice. So now we are inside my closet, which is kind of a weird place to store manga, but this is where I keep all the series that I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep. So first we have Children of the Whales, which is a really good and interesting series and it has amazing art, but it's just really complicated and I don't really have the mental energy to always like be trying to figure out what's going on. So I might stop. I'll probably end up selling this just for some cash. And we have Delicious in Dungeon. It's good, but I can I can definitely tell that I feel like this will be a series I get bored of in like two more volumes. So I'm not really going to continue it. Then we have The Savior's Book Cafe Another World, Isekai. Um, I've read up to volume four. It's okay. It has a fifth volume coming out, so I think I'll just wait to see what happens in the fifth volume. To see if I want to like buy the rest of it or just drop it. And then Daily Report about my Witch Senpai is good. It's a contemporary office romance, but um sorry. It's it's good. Um there's more chapters of it out, and I might read those. I'm just not really sure if I'm gonna keep it. And then we have the girl from the other side, 
which is a really popular series and I liked it, but I just wasn't really that impressed by the ending. I think the ending left a lot to be desired. So I might get rid of it. My volume seven is really water damaged. Like you can't tell from here, but it's like crunkled up and it's just gross. So hopefully I'll be able to sell like most of it and then just get rid of volume seven. But yeah, that concludes my manga collection. Thank you. So that concludes all of the manga that I do own. I'm just gonna quickly talk about some manga that I don't own, but I really do like. Um, I really like Akane Banashi, which is a shonen about Rakugo, which is, which is a traditional form of Japanese storytelling that's getting printed this summer. So I will be getting it when it begins printing this summer, but I just don't have it now because it's not out yet. Um, the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting is really good, and that is one that's on my priority to own physically. Hopefully I will get it soon. Um, I really like Chihaya Furu, which is about Karucha, but there is no official English print of that yet. Um, it is published digitally by Kodansha, but Kodansha doesn't like to print anything. Well, Kodansha doesn't like to print most things that I would like. So I'm kind of out of luck for now, but hopefully that will happen one day. It is very long, so I understand the hesitation, but hopefully it will happen one day because I know a lot of people will be really happy about that. Um, Kaguya-sama is really good. I've completed it. Um, I just don't think it would be a good idea to like buy all of it because it is 28 volumes and that's a lot, especially when you're working on limited space like I have. Um, if I were to collect it, I'd probably just get the second half just because I think that's the half that's better. But maybe one day I will have a bigger bookshelf and more space and I'll be able to get it in its entirety. Um, Josiah the Tiger and the Fish is really good. It has a movie. I want to see the movie. I just haven't yet. But the manga is really good. It is on my priority list to get soon. Um, Usotoki Rhetoric has just been begun printing in English. Um, it's a good mystery shoujo series. It takes place in the 1920s. It's good. Um, I will pick it up one day. It's just not like my priority for right now. And then hmm, there was one more. I don't know. Sorry. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I know it's really different from what I usually put out, but it does mean a lot that you did click and watch the video. Um, if you like my content, please consider um, checking out my other content and I'll see you later. Thank you for watching.